Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here in Western Canada. I hope all of you are having a great start to your weekends. Students in this class we are looking at IELTS listening. This is listening part three and part four. The listening section in the IELTS exam has four parts. Each one is about 10 minutes. Each one gets more and more difficult. Um, so we're looking at the two difficult parts of the listening section. Part one and part two we did last week. If you missed that class, it is up on YouTube. Just search in the live class recordings for listening part one and part two last week. Welcome Fuang. Welcome Maya, welcome to our members. Welcome Kruti, Ugulhan, Dari, Masha, our subscribers. Nice to have all of you here with me today. Uh, students, again, this lesson, these materials are brought to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Visit us there for the general IELTS. Check us out at gieltshelp.com. These are the websites that power these live classes. We will use the websites today for the listening materials and the listening test. Of course, this is a subscribers chat class, so to join the chat, answer the listening questions while we listen, uh, simply just subscribe to the YouTube channel. It's free, it's great, you get notifications of when these classes are happening. Uh, the websites, for those of you who are looking for them, this is the general IELTS website here at gieltshelp.com. To get all the practice exams, lessons, videos, click the big red join button that's just behind me. And for the academic, it's aehelp.com here. Click this big red button there to join our premium IELTS package. Click, click. And you're off to the races. We're an IDP affiliate. We're a British Council partner. We're an IELTS test registration center. We are world leaders when it comes to IELTS exam preparation. So click the button, uh, fill out the form. It's a one-time payment. You get lifetime access. Use the code MASTER9 for an extra 10% off the price and you're good to go. Uh, we'll come back to the website and start the listening in just a few moments. Uh, the apps are Academic IELTS Help and General IELTS Help. These apps you can get in your app stores. They will link to the websites. Instagram is IELTS underscore AE Help and G IELTS Help. Dinesh, good luck on your exam tomorrow. I'm I am looking at the chat. A lot of you have exams tomorrow. Pana, good luck on your exam tomorrow. Ah, music, good luck on your exam tomorrow. Uh, last minute practice, last minute training. Use the websites for sure. All right, if you have questions, concerns about English, about IELTS, send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com or admin at aehelp.com. All right, everybody, we will have classes tomorrow as well. We'll have speaking part two for members and speaking part three for everyone. And in your uh, spare time, check out these videos. Check out this speaking video here. Uh, it will give you some help for preparing for your speaking. Amra, long time no see, one of our uh, channel moderators. Amra, good to have you in the class. Nice to have you with me. Okay, everybody, so um, I'm going to give you some listening tips and strategies while we do the listening test. So let's just jump into the listening exam. Uh, again, here is our exam book. This is exam number one and it's uh, part three and the older exams you're going to see it as section three and the newer exams you're going to see it as part three. Um, and uh, in the IELTS exam you have a little bit of time to review the questions uh, before you start to answer. Uh, students will listen, will answer and will go over the answers and talk strategies. So um, put on your headset and uh, put your answers into a separate piece of paper or somewhere else, not in the chat. We'll share them in the chat after we'll, we're done listening. So don't put them in the chat while you're listening, okay? All right. So let's jump over to the website for the audio. All of the audio is contained online um, in the website. We're going to go to our My Student account. Again, for those of you who have the premium version, make sure that you're using the computer-based practice exams, the interactive course. 
look at the workbooks, the PDFs, um, and uh, of course the 200 and something videos that are here for you to uh, learn strategies for each section. Let's go to the audio CDs. Uh, this is going to be track three. Everybody get ready to listen. Here we go. Just gonna make sure I've got enough volume. Yep, I do. Okay, let's do it. Let's listen, let's answer. Now turn to section three. Take some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Listening section three. You will hear three students organizing a class project. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. I just got an email from the professor saying the due date for our European History Group project has been pushed back to Monday. Great! That means we'll have the weekend to work on it. I suppose that's good news, but I don't really want to do any homework on my weekend. I have planned to go away with my girlfriend for some relaxation this weekend. I suppose that's understandable. Maybe we should just have it done by Friday, the original due date. That gives us today and Thursday to finish it. We can do that, I think. I'm available tomorrow. How about we spend today planning it, a sign task to take home with us and do tonight, and then meet tomorrow and put it all together. Does that sound right? That works for me. That doesn't work too well for me. My afternoon is very busy. I guess I'll just have to burn the midnight oil tonight. What has you so tied up, Evan? I have a basketball game after school today, and then my favourite football team plays this evening at seven. It's okay though, I'll get the work done. Let's get started on the planning. All right, so we have to come up with a three panel poster about a topic in European history. I already bought the material for the poster, so we don't have to worry about that. How much was it? It was three pounds. Okay, we'll each give you one pound for the poster board. No, don't worry about it. My dad paid for it anyway. Sounds good to me. Right then, since there's three of us, my idea was that two of us could take care of the writing part of the project, while one of us could look after the artwork, making the poster look smart. I'll do the artwork. I think I'm a pretty good artist. I'll be happy to do half the writing. What topics are we going to choose? Well, the professor said the topic has to be an event that took place somewhere between 1400 and 1800, so we can't do either of the world wars. That's too bad. My dad is an expert on the Second World War, and he could have helped me with my part. What are we going to do instead? You now have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen to the rest of the discussion and answer questions 27 to 30. I was reading my textbook the other day and I read some really interesting information on the French Revolution. That's a really good idea. I know. How about instead of doing a summary of the French Revolution, we write about some of the people involved instead? Oh, I like that idea. So who are some of the important people? Well, there's the King, Louis XVI. Robespierre was important, I think. Yes, he was. And of course, Napoleon Bonaparte. We should have four people, so you can each write about two people. How about Marie Antoinette? OK, so we have four historical figures. Each of you are going to write about two. Now we have to decide how much we're going to write. Remember, we have to fill up a three-board poster. That's a good point about the three-board poster. Maybe we should do a fifth person, then we can have two figures on each side with one in the middle. Good idea. We can make the middle one really important. We'll make that one Napoleon. As for a fifth person, how about Voltaire? Good. So how about I do the important one on Napoleon and a smaller one on Robespierre? Okay, and I'll do the other three. 
How long should each topic be? I'd say 200 words each for the small ones and 450 for the big one on Napoleon. I think that sounds about right. What do you think about meeting up later on? That is the end of section three. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. All right, in the half minute time, always check your answers, students. It's very important. Make sure your spelling is correct. Make sure your logic is correct. Let's take a look at these uh, questions. So um, you have note paper in both the computer-based and the paper-based. So it is a good idea to take some notes when you catch them. Okay, so look at the questions, look at the answer choices if they're there, listen to the audio, listen to those key words that are being emphasized by the speakers. Um, here for question 21, it says, what day of the week does the discussion take place? Um, and then they're kind of chatting about it. There, there are a few different uh, elements going on here. And eventually they say, you have to be patient in part three, students. This is a important tip here. Um, for those of you who have done the IELTS exam, you know this. So tip in part uh, three and four, you have to be patient because the correct answer often comes a bit later okay and that happened here right so uh what day of the week what day of the week means of course monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday or sunday and uh, here, eventually, they're talking about it, and then uh, they say, okay, uh, it should be done by Friday, which will give us uh, today and Thursday to finish it. And from that information, Maya and Fuang and Kruti have uh, successfully uh, figured out that the correct day here is Wednesday. Yeah, if... Uh, Thursday and Friday are days that they can keep working and today's a different day. You can infer, you can figure out that today's Wednesday. This is called an inference type question in the listening, okay? And now you can write, for example, wed like this for this as well. Okay, that's all right. If you write Wednesday, make sure you have the correct spelling. Watch out for that tricky N there, Wednesday. It's got that weird silent N in there when Wednesday okay so be very careful the correct answer there is Wednesday and many of you got that which is nice okay all right then you had this uh, kind of table completion pay attention to the instructions no more than one word if you write two words for sure it's wrong okay so logic is really important too. You can kind of figure this out even if it, you missed it, if it was a little bit fast. Um, the group task, pay attention to the headings. And then when this task is completed, all right? So they're doing something about the project today. This is what they're doing right now. So you should get this even if you missed it because they're doing it right now. They're doing it in this audio. So what are they doing, everybody? There's something in the project today. And, and one of the, I think it's one of the girls that says, uh, well, that gives us today to a plan. Yeah, planning the project. Very good, Redexar. Yeah, this is planning the project. I'm planning the project today. And that gives us uh, tonight to work on the project. And then putting the project together. When do they plan to put the project together? And again, logic. So even if you missed it, you can take a pretty good guess here. It's today, tonight, and Kriti says it's tomorrow. <laughs> Redexar agrees. Very good. Yeah. Uh, students, spelling matters on the IELTS exam. So for example, uh, with tomorrow, you have to have the uh, two R's, okay? It's very important that you have the, the double R there tomorrow. So simple words like today, tonight, tomorrow, you have to be able to spell correctly. Okay. All right. So today, tonight, and tomorrow. Okay, is the correct answer. All right. 
Okay, now again, it's another one of those tricky ones where you have to be patient. Uh, who paid the cost of the poster board? So hopefully by this time you've realized they're working on this poster project, right? It's a typical kind of project in schools where you have to create this poster with information. And then I was kind of listening, 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 and then eventually it says, one girl says, oh, it was three pounds, we'll give you one pound each. And then the girl says, nah, dad paid for it, don't worry about it, right? So uh, Maya and Asina Alexander, nope, um, it's the woman's father, one of the woman's father paid for it. So it was B, she's a woman, she says, oh, my dad paid for it anyway. All right, now they talk about the project and one of the women gives the scope of the project. Uh, she says, the topic must be in an event that occurred sometime between this and this time frame. Now here, this is question 25, and you can see it says no more than three words, so you need just two numbers here with a comma. And the numbers were, yeah, that's right, Kruti says 1,400 and 1,800. Maya, it's not 400 or 800, it's 14. So careful with that. 1400 and 1800. Now, of course, if you miss that, you can kind of get it from the information later on, right? Because they talk about it. So if you miss a question, don't panic. Sometimes they repeat, right? So it's 1400 and 1800. Um, so in the answer sheet, if you're doing the paper-based exam, you could do it like that, <clears throat> 1400 to 1800. Okay, or you could do it like this. Okay, uh, you don't really need the word to or and because they have it here in the question. So you don't need to include pieces that are in the question. What topic would the male student like to write on but cannot due to assignment restrictions? And there's an easy way to answer this question. Make sure to always choose the easiest path. There's a really, yeah, Redexor. So that's the challenging way to answer it. So Redexor says it was the Second World War which of course is 20th century history. Uh, Maya says World War II. Now Maya, you would get that wrong. Why? If you put your answer like that, you would get it wrong. That's right, Redexar. It has to have a capital. It's the name of the war, right? The easiest answer for this one, by the way, is that, okay? World War II. You can use a number, uh, ni, din, uh, but uh, you have to have capital letters. This has to be all big. <coughs> Excuse me. Because it's the name. So as soon as you realize, oh, that's the name, uh, make sure to write capitals. Okay, that's another quick tip there. So as soon as you realize this is a name, then it's considered a proper noun in English and must have capitalization to get it correct. Okay, must have it. Now here, uh, where do the students decide to put each historical figure on the sides of the poster in the middle? When you see a question like this, where it's basically telling you the directions, um, it's a really good idea to just draw a quick picture. Okay, so here's the poster. And even if you haven't figured out that this is a trifold, so it's got three sections, even if it's just one big poster, you're still okay. Just make sure that you visualize it. You're kind of planning it, right? Of course, this is important for uh, people going to schools and universities using English because you get a lot of instructions in many classes, different design classes, architecture, engineering classes, um, which are giving you instructions on what to put where, okay? I know a lot of students get really frustrated with these uh, diagram type questions, 
But think about it. Of course you have to have good listening for uh, directions like this because in university especially, but also in a lot of jobs and finding your way around the city, um, this is a part of everyday communication. You get instructions on what is where and what it looks like. And if you misunderstand, it's going to give you a headache. It's going to be a problem. And IELTS wants to make sure that that doesn't happen for you. Jasam Preet, uh, good luck on your exam tomorrow. Maya giving us all the answers. Um, yeah, so uh, first of all, um, what are they doing the project on? <laughs> let's, let's make sure everybody got that, right? So what is this project on? What are they doing? Okay, what's the topic? Uh, students, when you're practicing listening at home, it's an extremely good practice strategy uh, to go beyond the questions in the sheet. Okay. Uh, for example, what is this project on? Okay. Oh, Psilinator, you're doing the exam tomorrow as well? Yeah, the best of luck. Make sure that uh, you really just stay calm and pay attention to strategy. Just Epsilonator in the writing, focus on strategy. Interpret the question, paraphrase it, identify the topic, just like I showed you in the last class. If everybody or anybody missed that, uh, that task two class should be up pretty quick. So Epsilonator, maybe uh, review the first live class from today. The writing is the most challenging part, and that's the most challenging in university as well. It's the most challenging to get good grades on essays, so it's not... Uh, it's not an accident. So in this listening, what's the topic? What are they? What is their project on? Okay, you have to be able to understand this kind of information because this is what you will do in university. Okay. So hi, Carolina. Happy to have you join as well. I think you're traveling today, so safe travels. Okay. Maybe you're at the airport now, <laughs> logging on. All right. So anybody, I'm a little bit worried that I'm not seeing answers to my question. What's the topic of this project? Paying attention, it is the French Revolution. a three board poster project on the French Revolution okay um, students before you sit your IELTS exam you should have some basic knowledge of import, important moments in history geography physics so science if you forgot that I highly recommend reviewing it if you have uh, forgotten uh, some uh, key info from high school uh, review it. Okay. Uh, read chapter summaries from English uh, high school textbooks online. Okay. That's a very important tip. It can really, really help you with uh, your IELTS exam. Okay. Uh, why was the French Revolution important? I think every time uh, when we cover this listening section live every few months uh, I mentioned this and you should know this okay uh, the French celebrate this uh, day on my birthday actually on July 14th okay and it's very important you need to know this it's a part of your history it's part of who you are it's a part of the way you live your world so why is the French Revolution a very important part of human not just French but of human modern history modern not old modern history okay it worries me when people don't know uh, the answers to these questions 
Absolutor, yes, that very famous quote, let them have cake, <laughs> Marie Antoinette. Um, absolutely, there's a lot of information in that uh, famous quote, Absolutor, it's uh, it's good, good share. Uh, why is it important, everybody? So again, uh, before... Alexander says it created the French Republic. Yes, which ultimately created what? So, and Alexander, for the Russian Revolution, right? The Bolsheviks and Russian history, which followed thereafter. It took a while, but it followed thereafter. Was also related to the French Revolution. So Alexander will tell you that, yep, yeah, the uh, Russian Revolution that happened uh, relatively later, but uh, still happened, uh, also uh, referenced the French Revolution. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, <laughs> I like the first way you expressed that, Alexander. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, <laughs> um, okay. Uh, so, <laughs> Ipsilinator. Oh, that was a good laugh. Thanks, Alexander. Even the typo, I think, <laughs> was a good laugh. <laughs> Epsilonator says, Kings were overthrown, heads rolled, and terror reigned after the regicide. Um, yes. Um, Asina says, let's just simplify it. Uh, slowly but surely, democracy was born. Okay. The birth of modern day democracy now uh, we could argue about that Alexander and uh, we could just say a new type of monarchy or um, a type of uh, kings and queens were born let's not digress into that but anyway historians will say it is the birth of modern day democracy and I don't know about you, but I can speak for myself that I'd rather live in the modern democratic system than in the old uh, system of kings and queens. So if you're in the uh, same uh, kind of concept or feeling, then we can say a thank you to the French for starting the trend, right? <clears throat> okay. All right. So uh, birth of modern day democracy. Yeah, that's probably not a bad piece of information to know about our history right and you can see all the chatter uh, everybody watching in the chat there that a lot of people do know that <laughs> and uh, it's good so whether you're in India or Colombia or Argentina or Canada or Japan right the French Revolution definitely had an impact on the way the world is today Okay. Epsilonator says, I absolutely love the lore of the French Revolution. Yep, absolutely. All right. So uh, if you do the listening, or I should say when you do the listening exercise at home, don't just like blindly listen and go, okay, I did like, you know, five out of 10, whatever next. Ask yourself, why did I get five out of 10? What should I know about this topic? Maybe I'll go research it. They talked about the French Revolution. Kind of sounds important. I'll read two pages on what this was. Okay. Does everybody, everybody, I'm kind of I'm like, I'm getting overexcited with the coffee and everything, but does everybody follow me on that? So it's not good to, um, to just kind of do these listening exercises without really paying attention to what you're listening to, just paying attention to the mark. So uh, a big mistake of many uh, IELTS aspirants is they focus way too much on their scores and ignore what they're actually listening to. very difficult way uh, to get a good score so instead when you do practice exams and you hear something like French Revolution and you don't know much about it take a minute 
and read about it for five minutes, okay? So when you do practice exams at home and are unfamiliar with a topic, take a few minutes and read about it. Even if you might not get that same topic, something related to that, right? Like here, we're talking about the French Revolution, but you might go to your IELTS exam and of course, nothing about the French Revolution. However, you might have a listening part four, for instance, about democracy. And now you go, ah, I know what democracy is. I learned about it when I was reading about the French Revolution, right? So uh, think about that. That would be just a huge luck if you heard about the French Revolution, but you might hear about democracy. And if you did a little bit of research about the French Revolution, you'll do a lot better if you get a topic on democracy, okay? Make sense? Epsilonator says, and it also builds engagement to the listening test. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Um, Justin Preet says, sometimes when I pay too much attention to questions, the answers are automatically missed. Uh, Justin Preet, that can happen. You have to be careful about that. However, when you pay attention, if you're catching it, you can go back and answer that question as long as you understood what's happening, right? Okay, so let's answer these. So we've got this uh, poster. We've got uh, five people on this poster. We've got one important one in the middle, two less important, but also important people on each side. Um, who's in the middle? Who goes to the middle? If we can figure this out, we'll be able to give the answer A, B, C, D. A is on the side, B is in the middle, C is not on the picture. So who goes to the middle? Napoleon, that's right, Redexar, it's Napoleon. Okay, who goes on the side of the poster? There are four people that go on the side. <clears throat> who goes on the side of the poster? Alexander says, Robespierre, yeah, is one, and <clears throat> the king, that's right, Louis uh, the um, uh, 15th, yeah, sorry, 16th, of course, Louis the 16th. Yeah, so Robespierre and Louis the Sixteenth. Bonus question, everybody. Let's make this fun. So uh, obviously Rousseau is not in. Okay, so the correct answers are A, C, A, and uh, B. Okay, but I'm going to take this one step further. Let's have fun with it. Let's see how well you're listening and digesting the information. Uh, there are two more people that they um, include. Who are the two people? Let's see who was really um, paying attention to this listening. Okay, Redexar says Voltaire. Okay, and who else? There's another famous person here. Um, that is included. So there's there's one more. They say, let's do this person. They were kind of famous or they were a controversial figure for sure. I think we had Redexar quote this famous person. Let them have cake. Meaning it's good to share our wealth. Um, yeah, my um, uh, dairy, Marie Antoinette. All right, uh, let's take this one step further. <laughs> I'm going to have fun with this for a moment uh, before we get into our final listening, uh, listening part four. Let's take this one step further. 
um, if you were to do this project, okay, so we've got uh, King Louis the Sixteenth, we've got Marie Antoinette, uh, we've got Napoleon, um, we've got um, Robespierre, we've got Voltaire, uh, we've got a three board poster, and this is kind of also helping you with, uh, you know, what to expect when you get into uh, some English speaking universities like in um, the US or in Canada. Let me do this a little bit better for you. So you've got this three board poster. Another fun question, and some of you might be thinking, why isn't Adrian just playing the audio? Why aren't we just answering question after question and then looking at the right answers? It's not an effective way to improve your listening skills. Um, you become effective at listening in another language in English when you interact with the material. Okay, As soon as you start interacting, you discuss it with classmates like here in the class, um, you're going to become a better listener. Okay, Active listening means you're using what you listen to. Just listening, listening, answering, answering, checking, checking. Very, very slow progress. Okay. Here's a fun question for you, and this is the kind of um, exercise or detail that you can do with these. If you did this project with your two friends, okay, and you've got these people, so you've got Napoleon, you've got Voltaire, you've got Marie Antoinette, you've got Robespierre, um, and uh, you've got uh, King Louis, right? So Napoleon, King Louis the Sixteenth, Voltaire, Marie Antoinette. Where would you put them? So Napoleon's in the middle because Napoleon became the new emperor of France, but uh, he was the democratic leader of France, right? So Napoleon goes in the middle. Um, where would you put um, the rest of them logically? And if you know a little bit about these characters, it makes a lot of sense right away. So who would you put here? At the start of the poster, who would you put here? I'll tell you who I would, and maybe there's different ways to do it, but I would do it like this. Okay. So, who would you put in space number one, two, three, four? Because, of course, with a poster board, uh, you're presenting, you're visually presenting to your audience. And this could be an engineering project on another day, uh, this could be a computer science project on another day. So who would you put where? Um, who would you put in space one? Who would you put in space two? Who would you put in space three and space four? Okay, Alexander says, in number one, I would put King Louis the Sixteenth. I would too, Alexander. You're on the same page as me. I would too. Now again, there's different answers and different logic here, I'm sure, but um, I would put uh, King Louis the Sixteenth there, and then Maid says I would put Marie Antoinette in number two. I would too. It's not by accident. So students, if you know a little bit about these characters, you probably have an idea of why, because what you would tell people who are looking at your poster. Okay, I would put the King in one. Marie Antoinette in number two, and then I would put probably uh, Voltaire and Robespierre here. Okay? There are reasons for that. Um, let me quickly explain it, then we'll go on to uh, the uh, fourth listening part. And Alexander and I would probably make some good teammates here on, on this one. Um, the reason I would put uh, the king in space number one is because he was basically the cause of the French Revolution. He was royalty. He was a real jerk from the sounds of things. Um, he was very cruel uh, to people. And so people had enough. They're like, we don't need this guy telling us how to live our lives. He's torturing us to live a insane and wealthy life. So he kind of started it. He's royalty. He had to go. He was the guy that started uh, Marie Antoinette, on the other hand, was interesting because she was also royalty, but she was on the side of the people. So she was controversial. They had to cut off her head, but they really didn't want to. A lot of people really liked her. So she was royalty and 
the king was royalty, he was a bad guy, she was a good girl, or a good woman, I should say, uh, to be a bit more PC. So she was good, he was bad, they were both royalty, but they both kind of showed the side of the society that people really didn't want to have anymore, okay? Um, and then Voltaire and Robespierre, they were both basically for the people. Uh, so they were creating uh, literature and messages that convinced people to change. So they were uh, a part of the movement for the revolution. So that's why it would make sense for uh, Voltaire and Robespierre to go into uh, three and four. So again, this is where, you know, if some of you are like, what? So Justin Preet's like, eh? um, then do a little bit of research. Famous people, you'll hear about them in many countries, okay? All right, so that's how I would create that poster board. I can visually see how I, I would put that together. And maybe Alexander, you're, you're kind of like, well, I would do it for different reasons, but um, yeah. Uh, Alexander says, I heard that Marie Antoinette proposed to eat cake if people have no bread. Yeah, there's a long history there, Alexander, but we won't go into it. So anyway, that's the idea. Take it one step further. Did everybody get that message from what I'm saying? When you're doing your listening practice at home, don't just try to go through as many listening tests as possible uh, without paying attention because that's not an effective way to improve your listening. You're going to get the same score, same score, and then you think, well, I'm not improving. Well, it's because you're not being effective, right? Okay. All right. Um, let's do part four, everybody, and then we'll count uh, scores after, okay? So again, for newcomers, put your answers separately, not in the same, uh, or not in the chat, please. Give everybody a chance to answer, okay? All right, <clears throat> so uh, let's do this. Uh, switch gears. Once you finish one, one listening, here we finished it, we discussed it. French Revolution, it's behind us. We're on to the next topic. Uh, switch gears, climate change. Clear your brain, erase, delete, delete. Throw it in the trash can, empty trash. New document. We're on to climate change, global warming greenhouse effects, all the vocabulary, all the content should be coming into uh, your mind. Solar energy, wind power, green products, uh, rechargeable batteries, save the planet, recycle, everybody has to change, we're all going to die. Um, all these ideas should be spinning in your head. Uh, don't focus too much on the all, we're all going to die. No, we're all going to be happy. We're going to help replant nature and restore the animals, okay? So Redexar says, shift, delete. Yeah, because they change. The topics are not connected. They're different. So once you finished one, shift, delete. Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay. And then back to the website. So again, everybody, we're on aehelp.com for these practice exams and materials. We've got our listening caps on. Here we go. Now turn to section four. Take some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Read fast. Listening Background section information. Four. Causes and you will implications. Hear a professor discussing climate change. Who is going to change? Economics. Conclusion. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I know these are the points that are going to be uh, covered. Humanity, as well as other species, have to alter, have to change. Okay. Business and the environmentalists have been fighting with each other. Now okay. listen carefully. And climate change is caused by greenhouse gases. Okay. Hello class, hope you all had a good weekend. Today we will be talking about climate change. Life on Earth is going to have some adapting to do if climate scientists are correct with regard to their predictions of the Earth's rising atmospheric temperature. Humans and animals alike may have to change both their habits and habitats. The average temperature on the Earth's surface has risen by an estimated 1 degree centigrade in the last 100 years and this trend is continuing at an ever increasing speed. Until now it seems that business and the environment have met as adversaries. 
But with the growing profitability of green products, perhaps business can play a positive role in the fight to save the environment. There is an ever-growing consensus that the cause of climate change can be linked to human action. To be more specific, environmental change is caused by the emission of greenhouse gases. Carbon dioxide is chief among these. So what's so bad about things getting a little warmer, you may wonder? Weather patterns could become more extreme, the polar ice caps could melt, sea levels could rise, and instances of famine due to drought could also increase. On the other hand, places such as northern Canada will likely become more productive for farming and mineral and crude oil extraction. What isn't positive about the permafrost melting is that the ice is a carbon sink and when it melts, it releases even more carbon into the atmosphere. It's clear that humans will have to change their relationship with the Earth and its resources, but the debate remains over who should be leading that change. Advocates of personal responsibility claim that small personal measures, such as changing light bulbs or riding a bike, can make a significant difference. On the other hand, governments from developing countries are calling for economic reparations to be paid by developed nations because, after all, it is the rich who cause most of the environmental damage and made money from it. The other major group that has profited from our increasing environmental degradation are corporations. Business has always been about production and consumption. The invisible hand of supply and demand has long run our economic system and now there is an ever-growing demand for conservation. The question is, when will consumer demand be commensurate with green technological advances that allow for environmentally friendly products to actually be more profitable than those that pollute? One option to speed up this process is to have governments impose true cost taxes on every product that is sold. This would force prices to include an economic pressure to purchase or use products that will not cause further environmental degradation or carbon emissions. There is little doubt that climate change is going to cause a drastic difference to our environment and way of life. The questions that remain to be asked revolve around how to solve the climate crisis and who will pay for the restructuring of our patterns of consumption that have led to these problems. With the ever-growing desire for green consumer goods, perhaps businesses can answer some of these questions by producing environmentally sound products. Even if business has a role to play in saving the environment, it is clear that we all need to do our part. That is the end of section four. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. Okay, students, and again, check the answers, and then you actually have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet in the paper-based exam. In the computer-based exam, you have about five minutes to review your questions. So here you have not just a half a minute, but you have actually more time to make sure that your spelling is correct, your logic is sound. So uh, use that time wisely, okay? Uh, go through the questions step by step. Focus on questions that you may have missed. Try to answer them with logic. Uh, part four, no breaks, one long, uh, paraphrased lecture and question set usually um, sometimes in the computer-based exam you get to choose the answers from a list sometimes you have to type them in <clears throat> all right so let's do this uh, let's answer these questions so climate change is what we're talking about background information lots of paraphrasing here you hear the lecturers say uh, many of these words in different ways so humanity sometimes he uses the same word uh, humanity as well as other species may have to drastically alter their um, yeah Maya make sure they're both plural okay may have to alter their habits yeah because it's the behaviors habits and habitats right so our behaviors and where we live okay so changing our habits changing our uh, habitats those were the two answers now this is one question here right this is only question 31 so in your answer sheet you kind of have to put it as like um, uh, with a comma okay 
Um, Earth's surface temperature <clears throat> has risen an estimated one degree centigrade in the past century. <clears throat> yeah, a lot faster now. Scary. Uh, businesses and environmentalists have been at odds with one another, but the emergence of something may change this. Uh, what was the answer for 32? It was two words. And they were very, he very clearly emphasizes, he actually, I think, mentions it a couple of times throughout his lecture, not just this one time. Uh, green products. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, environmentally friendly products, green products. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, causes and implications. Climate change is caused by greenhouse gases, specifically this gas. Um, Ipsilinator says that gas is carbon dioxide. Yeah, and Ipsilinator, you look like you have a mask on in your avatar. Is that because of the carbon dioxide? Um, you can simplify that, students. So you can just say CO2. Carbon dioxide. They'll take that. That is correct. That is carbon dioxide. Uh, CO2. Fast. Simple. If you don't know that, then you have to write carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is, yes, from science, but it's a common word. Okay, we use that word in everyday language all the time because it's one of the most common types of gas um, combinations out there, right? We breathe it out, breathe in oxygen, breathe out carbon dioxide, right? You breathe it out, you should know it. What are you breathing out? Carbon dioxide, among others. <laughs> right? So, if you're like, well, but I don't know those fancy words in English. Why do they want me to know chemistry? No, they just want you to know what you're breathing out. Okay? We're not talking about some very complex chemical compound. We're talking about your breath out. Right? So, again, remember what I said in the last part students don't just skip an answer and say oh whatever i'll get it next time um if you didn't get this you should go okay maybe i need to do a little bit of reading in basic chemistry <laughs> javis says i'm breathing out carbon monoxide uh the the tricky part of that job is carbon monoxide is very difficult to breathe out it gets stuck in your lung Right? That's why it's so scary. That's why we get carbon monoxide poisoning because we can't breathe it out. It gets stuck in our system and we die. It suffocates us. And that's why uh, carbon monoxide is uh, so bad. It's stuck. It gets glued into our hemoglobin. All right, so basic biology, basic chemistry, everybody. Cover those skills. Read about them before your IELTS exam, okay? So... Again, just a, a reminder, right? Make sure uh, to review your basic. I'm not saying like be a chemist and, you know, but if you're going into a pharmaceutical major, yeah, you should probably learn all the English around chemistry. Okay, make sure to review your basic chemistry, physics, biology, right? Math in English. Okay, super important. It's going to help you. All right. I, I know you know, Jab. I know you're kidding. All right. Um, so, warmer weather can cause extreme weather patterns. Ice caps could melt and famine could occur. Uh, Northern Canada may become a beneficiary. As far as food production is concerned, it could become a more productive place for what? Everybody, what do you think? Uh, Epsilonary says the next answer is farming or agriculture. Maya, that works as well. Farming, agriculture, both work. Farming is correct. Now, you got, you, everybody want to hear an interesting story? So when we created this uh, listening section, this is our very first exam, and this was made by us uh, 10 years ago. Since this exam was created, 
guess what has happened? You, this is just a fun fact. Some of you are like, what? Seriously? So since this uh, exam was created in 2000, around 2010, people in Northern Canada are now growing tomatoes and other crops that have never grown before. And the cost of properties, the cost of land in Northern Canada has increased in many places by as much as tenfold. It's 10 times more expensive. So if I had a time machine and I could go back in time, when we created this exam, I would have probably bought a whole bunch of farmland to be in Northern Canada because we literally predicted the future 10 years ago with this uh, part of the test. Uh, so you could buy land for just a few thousand dollars. Now it's going to cost you 50, 100 more thousand dollars. So uh, yeah, very predictive. Um, new farms in Northern Canada growing new crops and costing a lot of money to buy land there now. Still a good time to invest, but uh, not as good as 10 years ago. Okay, um, so a big negative is that the melting permafrost contains a lot of carbon which will be released if the ice caps melt. Okay, yeah, Rahat, you, you get a piece of paper. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Okay, who is going to change? People who think each person is responsible for themselves believe that small steps such as using energy efficient something or riding a bike can help. Justin Preet, energy efficient lifeboats? Definitely not. It's light bulbs. Fuang, correct. It's one word. Energy efficient light bulbs. I just actually uh, replaced um, the last of the incandescent bulbs in my house to LEDs the other day. So funny that we talk about that. Uh, pay attention to your everyday life, um, right? How many of you are using... Um, LED lights. How many of you are still using the old traditional lights? LED lights are about the same price now. They work better. They're brighter. They don't make a buzzing sound. Um, and they use way less energy. Uh, for those of you who are celebrating Christmas, throw out your old lights uh, if you have the colorful lights and make sure to get the new LED lights because literally the electricity that you're using will pay for your new colorful LED lights within like one to two years, okay? So it's time to get rid of those. Uh, <laughs> Alexander says, Russia is still an analog country. Um, it's gonna change, Alexander, it will have to, okay? All right, so light bulbs was the correct answer here. Use lead lights, okay, use lead lights. Uh, governments from developing nations want developed countries to pay them for causing such environmental damage. I agree. Countries like Canada and the US and Germany should be sending lead lights to other countries, okay? All right, uh, the something of supply and demand. This was a band nine level question. This was a very tricky one here, everybody. The something of supply and demand has been in charge of economics for a long time. Maya Fuang, very good listening. Rahat, be sure to use our premium IELTS course at aehelp.com until your 28th exam. It will help you a lot. Everybody who's telling me this is invisible hand is correct. The invisible hand of supply and demand. That's a big problem. Has been in charge of economics because humans, we tend to demand a lot. More, more, more. I need more. Um, not all of us. Kudos to the few who are minimalists by the way does everybody know that word it's a new uh new pop culture a new perspective in society some of you might have heard about this so people who choose uh, to live life um without wanting to have lots of possessions and buying uh, stuff. I'm going to use the word stuff. I rarely use the word stuff, but here it's correct. Stuff all the time. Uh, these people are called minimalists, and I think it's a great idea. 
Uh, sharing and renting is also another great idea. We don't all need to have our own boat. Um, they're called minimalists. I strongly believe in that. Maya says, I was born a minimalist. <laughs> nice, Maya. Good. Good for you. Happy to hear it. Um, yeah, Alexander, the opposite of a minimalist is an Ikea list. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Versus the Ikea list. <laughs> Uh, it's, uh, we just started a new phrase there, everybody. That's great. Okay. Um, so, yes, I think it's the right way to be is the minimalist, not an Ikea list. I don't know if an Ikea list is a minimalist. I think, Alexander, people want to, uh, when they go to Ikea, they want to buy a lot of junk. Um, okay. Although it seems like a minimalist, it's not. In my opinion. I'm old. Okay, um, economists wonder when consumer demand for environmental products will surpass products that pollute. Uh, Alexander, it's not downshifting, it's downsizing. Downsizing, yeah, is a, a related term. Um, one solution to this is to institute a something tax on each purchase which is deemed to be environmentally un friendly two words here emphasized by the speaker anybody who got it great job these last few questions were pretty tricky they're listening for those high level band eight band nine uh listeners true cost it was a true cost tax very good just some pre almost not free cost true cost tax okay um, this would provide an economic something to buy environmentally friendly products. If you had to pay more, and it's starting to happen, you're now, at least in Canada, if you have a gas-powered car, it's starting to become more expensive than an electric car. And I'm not going to get into the argument of like, yeah, but the batteries are bad for the environment. Not, not as bad as 50,000 liters of gas that you're going to burn during the 10 years um, in a gas car. But uh, sure, let's uh, say that the batteries are bad too. Um, I would rather throw away uh, 100 pounds of batteries than burn um, 10,000 pounds of fuel. Um, so it's, I think it's kind of propaganda by oil companies. But the batteries are bad. As bad as burning 10,000 gallons of fuel? It's hard to believe. Drilling massive holes in the ground for it? Um, anyway, we could argue about that, but uh, this would provide an economic pressure. Very nice, everybody. I appreciate everybody listening to my jargon as well. <laughs> I tried to speak to your logic, right? Um, okay, this would provide an economic pressure to buy environmentally friendly products, not to mention the noise pollution um, of... Uh, cars beyond if you ever heard an electric car they're way quieter animals are way less disturbed you're much more likely to hit a deer with a tesla than a gas-powered car they can't hear you <laughs> um, this would provide an economic pressure to buy environmentally friendly products absolutely all right, Moon, no worries. I hope that went well for you today. All right, the conclusion. Climate change is going to change our way of life. Who will pay for the necessary changes in our consumption patterns? With the growing demand for environmentally friendly goods, it is arguably... Who? This is a noun. Pay attention to the word form that comes into the space. So here, with the word arguably and which, we can figure out that this is a noun. And if we look at the sentence, we can figure out that business is, is the correct answer. Good for you. A couple people caught that. That was very good. Okay. It is apparent that, it is apparent, however, that, we included this to make sure to remind everybody of this important point have a responsibility to look after the environment now this makes a lot of sense it's logical it is apparent that epsilonator says all have a responsibility uh redexter yeah it's we all 
have a responsibility. Uh, if you put everyone, it's not correct because everyone is a has. Everyone has, not everyone have. So it's we all have a responsibility. It's this word that makes it tricky. Okay, so we all have a responsibility to look after the environment. Uh, students, how did you do in part three and part four? What did you get um, out of 20? For part three and part four, Epsilonator nine out of 10 on part four is fantastic. It's really good. Uh, Justin Priest says 15. 15 is not bad. 15 is pretty good for part three, part four together. Hi, Gerald. Shock Noza says 10. 10 is not, not bad. 10 is okay. A 50% on part three, four is not that bad. Uh, some people might think, oh, that's really bad. No, as long as you do 16 or more on part one and two, the easier parts, you're still at about a band 6.5. Okay. Tran says, I got about 12. Um, students, on our website, at the very, very bottom, which you can't see, you've got a score calculator. This is the URL. I'll put the URL in there for you, okay, in the chat. So you've got a score calculator that helps you convert these scores. So if you did the full listening, if you were in last week's class and this week's class, and you got your full score, and you got, like, let's say, uh, 26, then you got a 6.5. If you got a 32, you got a 7.5. If you got 15, you got a 4.5. If you got 5 or 5, then you got a 2.5. Okay. Uh, Trent, it's not new. It's a part of the website. It's on the bottom. Uh, students, on the websites, there are so many tools. You have to explore them. These are really comprehensive websites, right? So um, go to your My Student account. Uh, when you first log in, there's a tour. Go through the tour, okay? Uh, check the computer-based exam. Check the, uh, the different uh, sections of the academic course. Uh, go through all the lesson videos. Uh, there's tons of lesson videos for the listening as well now. Okay, so uh, go through them, watch them, learn. Okay, all right. Uh, to sign up for the website, everybody, uh, the home page is uh, aehelp.com, and uh, just click the big red button there to join the premium version. And it's a one-time payment, lifetime access. Really doesn't cost much. It costs about uh, the same as one trip to a restaurant and then you have all the um, all the materials that you need uh, join combine it with these live classes combine it with a couple of speaking and writing uh, practice interviews that you can buy from the website you're good okay you should be able to do well all right um, general IELTS uh, gltelp.com green background same idea uh, listening is more or less the same same with the speaking uh, reading and writing are different okay you're very welcome everybody good work Fuang in today's classes lots of um, participation and attention that was really good uh, all right um, Asya uh, make sure to read your answer after so if you hear a couple of words and you're not sure which one then read the full sentence and check which one makes sense you'll see only light bulbs make sense okay all right okay everybody uh, tomorrow uh, we will have uh, speaking and uh, the uh, second speaking class we're going to do on the website um, through the live speaking function there so uh, I'll give you more instructions tomorrow for that and uh, we'll use the websites to actually talk to you as well there's a way to talk to each other through the website there's a chat and video chat uh, option there um, so enjoy the start of the weekend hope to see you tomorrow in tomorrow's speaking classes uh, visit uh, aehelp.com gltshelp.com for your further IELTS studies if you have questions send me an email I'm happy to help much love to all of you wherever you are in the world today stay positive bye everybody